Good now. Now, Ben Croston was dying to come here and talk tonight. He's been working with a project called Raspberry Filling, and he also must mention the GPIO a little bit. So yeah. let's show for Ben. Slides or anything, I'm totally unprepared to talk. I only decided to talk about uh, 10 minutes before we started. Um, but I'll, I'll let you know what I've done with uh, Raspberry Pi so far. Uh, I'll start where Simon left off uh, with the GPIO. Uh, I happen to be the person that wrote the Python module that talks to the um, GPIO, GPIO on a Raspberry Pi. Um, and Hot Hopper of Press, this is a World exclusive. <laughs> I'm sure they're going to be rewriting it to get it to do even more so. Like edge triggering, um, basic control, control it, every feature you see on the data sheet, where the Python module will do that. At the moment, it, it, it either does ons and offs, and that's it. So, you heard it here first. <laughs> that's the GK, GPIO bits I've done. <laughs> One thing I've got uh, more to say about is Raspberry Filling, uh, which is a project I've been working on for several months. Raspberry Filling is the name that's been given to the educational user guide that's going to be um, going with the educational release of Raspberry Pi. Uh, and part of the team uh, that's been working on it, uh, the team working on it is a group of people from the CAS group which is computing at school groups and some teachers and so on. Uh, I've been specialising mainly with the uh, helping write and troubleshoot the Python uh, section of it. So a lot of the Python work in there is, I've gone through with a fine tooth comb. I've also written the interfacing section of it, which is par partly GPIO um, bits. Partly how to get it to send emails, uh, do web pages, um, do tweets, that sort of thing, interfacing with it as well as just GPIO. So that's a Raspberry filling which will be coming with the educational release later this year. It's not currently available yet, it's still in draft form. Do you think they'll, they'll, they'll get a full educational release before September? Uh, I, I don't actually know. Of no, I just wonder where your guess was. You know. uh, the aim is to have it done for September at the moment, but I've not been working closely enough to be putting it all together. My, my submission's been in for months. Is it only possible to get any of that information before it obviously comes out with the educational version? Or? Um, yes, there are some, a small handful of teachers being picked, I believe. Uh, I, I, I'm not entirely sure because I didn't have chance to um, spot up on all these questions and answers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a member of the, the organisation of computing at, at school and I, I, I'm aware of there's some, some names of people that have said to me, oh they're working on the materials and they are keen for people to have a look at them and give their impressions. So if you, if you talk to me afterwards or send me an email after the meeting, I'll, I'll, I'll put you in touch with those people. Okay? Yeah, so, yeah, the, the other project of got in mind from the Raspberry Pi uh, when I get round to it, was uh, getting it to um, work as a brewery control. <laughs> so, uh, probably using Arduinos for the electronic bits, but a Raspberry Pi for the user interface. One thing I always say is always use the right tools for the job. I think using Ar Arduino um, to do all the electronic -y stuff, uh, you've got a wider range of interfaces. Uh, more real-time control of it, and you're better off using the Raspberry Pi, talking to it via USB. Yeah. Uh, that way you're using both boards for the, what they're designed for. Yeah, the Raspberry Pi on its own can, can do it all. The Arduino on its own can do it all, using the right tools for the job. Anyway, can't think of much else to that's say. great, that's fine. But <laughs> well, plenty there for people to come and talk to you about afterwards. Thank you. Thank you.